Welcome to Duval Daily, presented by GenJag.com. I'm Jordan DeLugo. Thank you so much for tuning in here right now. We're talking about five things, five takeaways from the Jaguars' home opener loss to the Kansas City Chiefs. We're going to get into these things right now. Really appreciate y'all tuning in. If you enjoy the content, please like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. You can also check out GenJag.com slash shop, pick up some new Duval gear. All right, thing one, y'all. Chris Jones, he was unstoppable. For the Chiefs, they had him lining up on the interior where he normally aligns. They also had him lining up quite a bit against Anton Harrison, a rookie offensive tackle who played left tackle his entire career at Oklahoma, which is over to the right side. And that was just a really smart, heady move by the Chiefs defense. A total mismatch having Chris Jones go against a guy in his second start at right tackle. The Jaguars, they will not play another team in the AFC with an interior defender that dominant. Yes, there are other good ones. You saw two of them in week one. When you saw DeForest Buckner and Grover Stewart, you will see Jeffrey Simmons as well. I'm aware of that. But Chris Jones is a singular dominant force uh, that that makes things incredibly difficult, especially when you get him lined up in that type of um, uh, favorable matchup. Uh, All pro, future Hall of Famer versus a rookie. It was not good for the Jaguars. And the Jaguars' offensive line in general as a whole really needs to improve moving forward. I think they need to execute at a higher level. They need to play at a higher level. You have seen them dealing with some injuries. Brandon Sheriff and Luke Fortner with the ankles. Neither of those guys played particularly well today. Anton Harrison had a little bit of a rough go of it, trying to slow down Chris Jones. And then you also saw um, Ben Bart struggle a bit. Walker Little has been the Jaguars' most consistent offensive lineman so far over on the left side at left tackle. But overall, they just got to get better. They've got to improve as this season rolls along. If they don't, it's going to be tough. There's going to be frustrating moments throughout the remainder of this season. There's no doubt about that in my mind. And I think they have the guys to improve. But uh, I also wouldn't be surprised if you're talking about going into the 2024 offseason and offensive line interior specifically is kind of one of those areas areas that fans have earmarked for that first round pick. We'll see how it plays out, but I think that it's got to it's got to improve. There's no doubt about that in my mind. They have Phil Rauscher is a great offensive line coach in my opinion. They have guys that they've invested in pretty heavily, so I think that if they can't figure this out, things will be changing on the offensive line in 2024, but I think they have the pieces to figure it out and I think that they have the offensive system to make sure that they can mitigate some of their issues moving forward. Again, it just gets really difficult and it gets magnified when you're going up against a, a player like Chris Jones and a defense uh, like Steve Spagnuolo's defense in Kansas City. Thing number two, the offense, not just the offensive line, but the offense was out of sync in a pretty big way overall. Play calling, some of it sucked, right? execution some of that sucked as well luck there were a couple times where they were just a couple inches away from some amazing plays so i think luck had a lot to do with it i think play calling and execution had to do with it it's on everyone and i think nerves i think they're there the jaguars are now 0 three against the chiefs in the last two years doug peterson has never bent his beaten his mentor andy reed and so I, i think that there's just a little nerves from the entire team when it comes to facing the Kansas City Chiefs. And the Chiefs, whether you have nerves or not, are incredibly difficult to beat. That's just the way it is. Uh, But the offense, they've got to improve on the money downs. They've got to get better in the red zone. They they had a good red zone week in week one, but then they regressed in week two when they faced a defense that wasn't starting a bunch of rookies in the the back end. Um, But I would say it's no time to panic with this offense. A month, even two months into the 2022 campaign, Folks were saying Doug Peterson sucked at play calling. They were pissed about the way he was calling plays. And they were saying Trevor Lawrence was a bust. It's time to pump the brakes, folks. They have everybody in that building that they need to get the job done on offense. And they were really close against the Chiefs. You often see, as well, defenses playing much better than offenses early on in the season. That's just kind of the way it goes sometimes early on in NFL seasons. And speaking of defenses, thing number three, the Jaguars' defense, kudos to them. They've allowed 31 points in two games this year on the defensive side of the ball. They have been forcing turnovers. They have been clutch. They're top five in the NFL in turnovers. In fact, they're tied for second with turnovers forced at six. They're top five on third down percentage allowed on the defensive side of the ball. If they keep this up, they are are, are going to flip the narrative that the Jaguars' defense 
was the issue coming into 2023. And I think if they keep this up, the offense is eventually going to get where they need to get. And uh, they're not going to be playing Chris Jones every week, like I said. I think that this this has a, a potential here. If this defense keeps playing this way and the offense kind of gets out of their own way a little bit on that side of the ball just a couple times a game, I think you could be looking at a really balanced team, and that's exactly what you want. And you don't need to have that in September. What you need to have at the end of the year is that balanced team. They can go into the playoffs and play tough defense if they need to play tough defense, can put up points at a high clip if they need to do that, win playoff games the way that they're presented, the way you got to win, right? Uh, So for me, if they can keep doing this, this is going to be a, a very difficult team, a very difficult team to beat in the playoffs. And look, they're playing faster on the defensive side of the ball in their second year in this Mike Caldwell system That's exactly what the Jaguars were banking on. They were banking on development. They were banking on guys being more comfortable in year two in this system. So far, through two games, that's what you've seen. Now, they've got a long way to go. Just like the offense has a long time to get this thing going in the right direction, the defense has a long time to keep it going in the right direction. It's not going to be easy, but I think they have the pieces to do it. I called prior to the season. I thought they were going to be a middle-of-the-road defense. So far, they've been a little bit better than that, right? And so kudos to them, again, forcing turnovers, getting off the field on third down. They're able to play fast. They're able to play aggressive. Mike Caldwell has been aggressive, obviously, with the blitz calls. You're changing what the looks on the back end for offense is making it very difficult. I like what I've seen so far. I think they've got the guys to keep it going. We'll see how it plays out. Now, thing number four is injuries. They did have some injuries coming out of this game. Josh Allen has a shoulder. He is day-to-day. Obviously, don't want to be without him for any amount of time. Zay Jones has a knee. He's day-to-day. Same thing with him. You don't want to see him out for any uh, game action. And Anton Harrison has a calf, just a minor contusion, according to Doug Peterson. Um, So sounds like he'll be okay as well. And Luke Fortner and Brandon Sheriff came out of the game okay after dealing with the ankle injuries last week. So I think you should be all right. Obviously, as long as you can get Josh Allen and Zay Jones back for this weekend, you'll be feeling pretty good about it. Uh, But again, I kind of said this earlier. It is not time to panic. This is thing number five. Not time to panic, ladies and gentlemen. There is so much football in front of this team, and the right people are steering the ship. We saw this team come back from an unbelievable, unbelievable uh, amount of losses early last year, right? They were in a hole, and they clawed their way out of it to get into the playoffs. Now, you don't want to do that every year. And look, that last year is not this year. They're 1-1 one and one right now. The only team they've lost to this year is the Chiefs, right? It was an ugly game. It was an uninspired offense, but... They were a couple inches away from everyone's feelings, both nationally and locally, being entirely different coming out of this contest. They lost the game by eight points. If the Jaguars converted on one of those toe-tapping touchdowns, and there were three of them, if they converted on just one of them, this game narrative might be entirely different. Because if the Jaguars just score one more point than the Chiefs, if it's 19-18 to or 20-18 or whatever the score ends up being, People are stoked about the Jags, even if the offense didn't look great, even if they needed to improve in a lot of different areas, right? That's just kind of how it goes. So it's not time to panic. It's time to get in the lab if you're the Jaguars coaching staff and and players, which is exactly what they're doing, and get ready for Houston because they're coming in here next, and they beat you in Jacksonville last year. It's a different team in Houston entirely for the most part. But the Jaguars got to take care of business against C.J. Stroud, another rookie quarterback, second rookie quarterback they'll be facing this year. And they got to get a win before they head out to London, right, to take on the Falcons and then the Bills. I think that's where you're at right now. So got to take care of business. I think that they will take care of business. I think um, after week three comes and goes, folks will be back feeling pretty good about the Jaguars moving forward in the rest of the 2023 season. So do not panic about this football team. The right people are in leadership. When you talk about Doug Peterson, when you talk about Trevor Lawrence, these are the faces of the franchise. These are the guys that that are going to get this thing going in the right direction. And and look, one and one is not horrible. The Chiefs are one and one right now as well. You've got a lot of the AFC sitting at one and one. So I would not be in panic mode at all. It's early on in the season. 
Oftentimes, offenses take a few weeks to get things going. We'll see how it goes for the Jaguars the rest of the way. Really appreciate y'all tuning in. We will dive deeper into this game throughout the rest of the week, and then we'll get into Jaguars versus Texans for week three. Really appreciate y'all. If you want to support the channel, please like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. You can also check out ginjag.com shop. Pick up some new Duval gear. Have a good one.